Hi everyone, this is a video on orientation of surfaces and this goes along with section 7.6 on the surface integrals of vector fields. So the last video was just talking about the definition of surface integrals of vector fields. Now we want to take a, a brief aside here to talk about orientation because it turns out the value of surface integrals of vector fields is for the most part independent of parametrization. The only thing that matters is the normal vector you get from that parametrization. So let's talk about first just what I mean by orientation. So the orientation of a surface S Like I said, it's going to depend on the parametrization. Depends on the parametrization, which we'll call, like always, phi of uv. And what we're going to call the orientation is really just the direction of the normal vector. All right, so depending on what parametrization you use, right, you're going to compute some t of u, the tangent vector in the u direction, and some t of v, the tangent direction vector in the v direction. And when you take their cross product, you're going to get one of two vectors. So depending on phi, of course, tu cross tv points in one of two directions at each point. And I've sort of copy pasted this very nice picture from the textbook here. To really show what I mean by that. So Of course, right at each point, we're only one of two directions here at each point, right. So we're fixing the point that we're actually actually looking at. Okay, so and at at each point you could take the normal vector. So how it's kind of drawn here, it's like you have one choice of pointing up and one is pointing down. And each one of these is going to give you a different orientation. That's basically the definition. So if I call N1 the up direction, maybe you say uh, this surface is oriented upwards. Now, uh, it's pretty arbitrary in general to say what is up and what is down. That's why we have to make a defi definition like this. Uh, you have to tell me what is up and what is down in order for me to determine the orientation. Right, so the orientation is exactly a choice of normal vector. Do you choose N1 or N2? And of course, that depends on what parametrization you're working with. So orientation, just like I just said, is a choice of normal vector. And for the most part, if you're, I mean, if you're given a parametrization of the surface, then of course, uh, calling this a choice is a little uh, not, right? it's not really a choice if the parametrization is given to you. 
Uh, if the parameterization is given to you, then the orientation is already chosen for you. It's just the orientation ends up being whatever normal vector you get when you compute uh, tu cross tv, right? So this is our normal vector n. Usually little n is reserved for the unit normal vector. So you would actually have to divide tu cross tv by its length in order to get little n. Uh, but we're not going to worry so much about that because I'm not going to write n really in the notation when I'm computing, when I'm actually doing these problems. So that's orientation. And yeah, just to kind of see here, this is another example. Here's another picture from the, the textbook. Um, so if you choose this n, right, then we call uh, the side. So I think this is, this picture is pretty informative in and of itself. Right? The side that the normal vector is actually pointing out of, that is what we call the outside. And the inside is the other side of the surface. Okay, so depending on what normal vector you get, from your parameterization, you can then specify what side of the surface is the outside and what side is the inside. Right? This is just like up and down, right? So if you tell me my uh, normal vector is pointing Uh, up then right then up is the same direction as the outside of the surface okay for the most part you don't really have to worry about this it's just um, going to change maybe how you come up with the parameterization for instance if a problem asks you to uh, evaluate a service integral of a vector field of like coming outward, then you would maybe use the outward normal vector in the like usual sense of outward. So um, we have, yeah, and by usual sense of outward, I mean, so maybe something like this comes up where we are looking at the unit sphere. So in the unit sphere case, we actually have a kind of, we all generally agree on a direction that is outward from the unit sphere, right? Uh, it's this normal vector that, that points away from, if you think of it as a ball, the normal vector that points away from the ball. Of course, the other choice of normal vector is the one that points inward towards the origin. So some surfaces actually have an intuitive sense of what is outside and what is inside. But if you parameterize the unit sphere such that the normal vector points inward towards the origin, then it's actually the opposite of what your intuition, then the outside of the sphere actually becomes what we intuitively think of as the inside. Okay, so this is really just to, I'm not trying to confuse you here, I just want you to know that the choice of normal vector here is really rather arbitrary. For the most part, it's up to you. Just know that uh, if you choose a parameterization that is oriented in the opposite direction, what you end up with is the opposite value of the surface integral. So we have a very similar theorem to the one that we had with line integrals. Say phi1 and phi2 parameterize the same surface.
then uh, yeah with specified uh, normal vectors so let's say their normal vectors are n1 and n2 then uh, there are one right you have two options either n1 equals n2 in which case the surface integrals are equal just like in line integrals if you had two parameterizations of the same curve if they pointed in the same direction right their orientation was the same we got that the line integrals were also the same so the same thing happens here with surface integrals if we have two parameterizations of a surface with the same normal vector in other words the same orientation then they have the same surface integral same value and just like with line integrals if we have the opposite orientation in other words n1 is the opposite of n2 then the values of the integrals are also opposite meaning we get the negative okay so what this boils down to this is a lot of words here but what it really means right you can sum up with a very quick sentence just if the normal vectors are the same then the surface integrals are the same and if they are different you multiply it by a negative one and there's a very good example of this that um, you get the negative right when you have an opposite normal vector i have a very good example of this worked out in the notes for this week which everybody has already received uh, via email so check that out it's actually the first example i do in the notes uh, I compute a surface integral with two different parameterizations and of course each parameterization ends up having uh, the opposite normal vector. So uh, computing it one way you get 12 pi and computing it with the other parameterization you get minus 12 pi.